Do you sometimes struggle accentuating Spanish words in the right place? If you do, today's lesson will help you with it. Hello and welcome back to another Spanish lesson with me, Eva. As promised today, I will help you understand where to place the accent or where to place the stress when you speak Spanish. So when you have long words, two or more syllables, one of those syllables is always the accentuated one. And when I say accentuated, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has the, the graphic accent, the so-called tilde, okay? It just means that it stands out, okay? Of all the other syllables in that word, maybe there's just one more, maybe many more, there is one that really stands out that we pronounce more, more forcefully, so to speak, okay? We place more stress or an accent on that particular syllable, okay? Good. So, again, as I said earlier, you may be struggling to place the accent in the right place, and really, for the Spanish, having the accent in the right place and having the right number of syllables um, is very important for their understanding. Um, if you get the accent wrong or you suddenly add another syllable when there shouldn't be, they will be very confused, okay? So it is important that you not only pronounce the Spanish sounds correctly, it's also important that you place the syllable in the right place, okay? Really, it's a, there's a practical reason for it. If you get it wrong, um, they may not understand you, okay? At least not straight away, <laughs> okay? They will give you a look and you will have to repeat it uh, and uh, hopefully, eventually, they, they will know what you are talking about. Okay, good. So, accentuating Spanish words and especially placing tilde, so the graphic accent, placing tilde when needed, because we don't need it in every single word, okay, um, is really a two-step process, okay? And in order not to make this a very long lesson, especially because I also want to do an interactive part later on where I will ask you, I will give you an exercise to do and we will check it together. We will check your answers together because I want to include this um, interactive uh, or practical um, exercise as well. I've decided to uh, make uh, this tilde or accent um, topic lesson um, to divide it in two parts, okay? As I said, it's a two-step process. So today we are going to explain the first step and then in the next lesson I will explain and we will practice again together the second step. Okay, the two steps are first, any word that's longer than just one syllable, so two, three or more, any word uh, that's long, let's say, um, you need to know how to divide it into syllables, okay? The Spanish way, okay? You need to know which are the syllables, these little chunks that that word, let's say, is made up of, okay? That's the first step. The second step, and then, uh, as I said, we will see that in the next lesson, the next step and the final step is applying the rule, or rather checking if the rule, uh, and there is a rule, so that's good news, if the rule uh, is uh, respected. Because if we break the rule, if, if you see, realize that the Spanish actually put place the accent on a different syllable, not the one that the rule 
says should be accentuated. If you see that the Spanish actually accentuated differently, then you need to put the tilde, okay? Tilde is only there to indicate that a rule, uh, the, not a rule, the rule has been broken, okay? Good, okay. Again, we'll leave this second step for the next lesson. Today I want to explain how dividing words into syllables works in Spanish, okay? So, as I said earlier, what are syllables? Syllables are these little chunks of words that we instinctively, uh, um, we, we instinctively break up words into syllables, okay, when asked to, of course. When we speak, we don't speak ta, 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 like this, no? But um, if asked to break it up into syllables, we will instinctively know how to do it in our mother tongue. And Spanish is not really uh, different, but there is one thing, one sort of situation where things get a little bit tricky, okay? So I'll give you an example with um, a few English words, just so you know what I'm talking about before we move on to Spanish words. So for example, the word, I don't know, England, it has two syllables, England, England, uh, America, America, four, America, no? So like imagine that you are clapping, no? For every syllable, America, Argentina, uh, France, only one, Italy, three, uh, Russia, two, Australia, what did I do? Australia, four, etc, etc. Okay, I'm not going to give more examples, but now you understand what syllables are. And they work I would say pretty much the same way in Spanish, but there will be one thing that I will need to point out and show you how it works. So, speaking of countries, let's have a look at um, Italy in Spanish, okay? Italy in Spanish is Italia, Italia, okay? And there are three syllables. Italia. Okay, so it's Italia. Okay, as you can see, a syllable will always have at least one vowel. Okay, A, E, I, O, U in Spanish or A, E, I, O, U in English. These are the five vowels and basically syllables are always uh, chunks of words where we have at least one vowel, okay? That's the case with the first one. We have I or I in Spanish. Then here we have A and that's the easy part, okay? <laughs> There's nothing tricky, nothing difficult here. The tricky part starts here when we have two vowels in uh, next to each other, okay? So we have I and A here together in the same syllable, okay? When we have two vowels together in the same syllable, we call it a diphthong, okay? But sometimes we will have two vowels next to each other but they will go in two separate syllables, okay? And here is where I need to explain how and when we do it one way and when we do it the other way, okay? Good. So, just as a reminder, again, these are the five vowels in Spanish. A, E, I. O, U. Now, if you look at them, this is a trick that, that helped me when I was still studying uh, Spanish. 
a long, long, long time ago, I realized that there's three vowels here that you can sort of color in. A, E, and O. Okay? A, E, and O, you have to write them uh, lowercase, <laughs> not uppercase, because otherwise it doesn't work. So if you write them all lowercase, you see that three of them can be colored in. And these three are the so-called strong vowels, okay? A, E, and O are the strong vowels. You can think of them as strong or fat or whichever way you want, okay? And then you have E and U, which are the weak ones, or you can maybe even say the skinny ones, okay? Now, how does it work when two vowels, any combination, are next to each other in a word? When will they actually be in the same syllable, like we have here? Lia is one syllable, and when will they each be, let's say, assigned a syllable of their own? Now, in order to be together, at least one of them needs to be weak. Possibly both, but at least one of them needs to be weak in order for these two vowels, in order for us to squeeze them into the same syllable, okay? So if you have a combination of a of two strong vowels, okay, you will end up with two syllables, okay? Good. So, two strong vowels, any two, okay? Again, we are only talking now A, E, and O. For example, the word to read is Leer. Okay, it's not ler, it's leer. Okay, two strong vowels and they are each in a syllable of their own. To read is leer, leer. Okay, another example is uh, uh, ereo. We have four strong vowels and four syllables here. A, E, Re, O. Okay? Four strong vowels, four strong syllables. Okay? We can't squeeze two strong vowels into the same syllable. Uh, a name? Noah. Again, two syllables. No, and then a, ah. okay, and uh, I don't know, mm. peaton is a pedestrian, pe a ton, okay, pe one syllable, a ah, another one, and then ton is the last one, okay? So, if you have two strong vowels next to each other, they will be in two different syllables. Now, you may have a combination of a strong one and a weak one, in which case we are talking of one syllable, okay? An example, uh, again, a name, a female name is Maite, Maite, A, a strong one, I, a weak one, so they are together. Mai, and then te is a separate syllable, okay? Maite, uh, a pharmacy or a chemist is far, farmacia, far, ma, and then these two are together, thia, thia. And here we had my, te, far, ma, thia, farmacia is a chemist or a pharmacy. 
um, patio. We have pa, and then tio is one syllable. Even though we have two syllables, but because one of them is weak, it doesn't, let's say, deserve a syllable of its own. Okay, so it needs to go with a stronger one together. Patio. Okay, good. And of course, there are words where we have two weak ones together. Weak and weak together. And of course, they will be together in the same syllable. Okay, so a city in Spanish is ciudad. We have i and u together in the same syllable. Ciudad. Okay, another example uh, noise is ruido. Ruido. It's rui, rui one syllable and then do another one ruido okay another example uh, switzerland is suiza suiza we or sui is one syllable and then tha the other and again uh, buda is a widow buda we have bu both of them together and then the. Okay? Good. Okay, so this is very important, okay? Because uh, if you understand this, if you understand when you only have one, um, uh, uh, one uh, vowel in a syllable, uh, whether it, it's alone or with another consonant or maybe even two consonants it doesn't matter okay but when you have two um, uh, va vowels in the same syllable which is basically the case here okay uh, this is very important when it comes to uh, the next step accentuating okay uh, the words so Always keep in mind, if you find two vowels next to each other and they are both strong, they will be in two syllables, each in their own. But if you have two vowels next to each other and at least one of them is weak, or maybe both, then you, uh, have, then you are dealing with one syllable, okay? And knowing how many syllables are in a word is very important because the rule is very... Uh, specific. The rule uh, which you will see in the next lesson basically says if the word looks like this then the this syllable is accentuated but if it looks like that then a different syllable will be accentuated. Okay that's roughly what the rule will say. I will give you the specifics in the next lesson but in order for you to, to know and, and, and use that rule uh, and see if it's really being uh, followed, you need to know how to divide Spanish words into syllables, okay? So normally, uh, each syllable will only have one vowel, either alone or with some consonants surrounding it. But sometimes, when you find two vowels next to each other, you need to be careful and you need to know if those two vowels will form two syllables, if they're both strong, or if they will go together in the same syllable if at least one of them is weak, okay? So the first thing to do is know how to divide words into syllables, okay? And now we'll move on to the, the exercise which uh, I will make interactive, meaning I will give you a text with words, plenty of words, and your job will be to divide these words into syllables. Again, just simply with these vertical lines, no? Uh, okay, good. Let's, let's do the exercise and I'll see you back 
uh, here in just a moment. Okay, so welcome to the interactive, the practical part of today's lesson, where I will um, give you an exercise and give you time to do it, and then we will check your answers together. Okay, so I will just have to trust you that you are not changing your answers <laughs> when you realize that um, you've done something wrong. Okay, so in order to practice dividing words into syllables without worrying yet where the accent is or which syllable is the strongest one in the word, I, I was thinking of uh, maybe using a song, but then in songs there's so much repetition. In the end, I decided to use a prayer as a text to work on. And uh, you know that Spain is mainly uh, Catholic, I don't know, maybe 80% <laughs> of uh, Spanish uh, say they are, um, they consider themselves Catholic, um, not necessarily practicing Catholics, I would say, but they do consider themselves Catholics. And one of the most important uh, prayers in um, Catholic um, faith, religion, is our Father. Okay, in Spanish it's called Padre Nuestro, and it's actually written together uh, as a name of the prayer, Padre Nuestro is written together, and basically it means our father okay so the way we will do it you will see uh, the the words written here on the blackboard i will not read them out loud because i do not want to uh, lead you into temptation <laughs> no i do not want to um, give you any hints how to separate the words into syllables okay so i will not be reading the spanish version because i want you to work with it uh, without being influenced by the way i pronounce it by the way i say it i will give you the english uh, translation in case you're not familiar with uh, this prayer uh, and also so that it's easier for you to sort of understand what it is uh, that these words mean. Okay, good. Okay, let's start with the first line. And your job is to copy it uh, wherever you, um, on a piece of sheet of paper, if you're working with a, um, uh, I don't know, a notebook or a pad or whatever, copy this line that you will see in a moment and then just separate the words into syllables like we did earlier with our examples earlier, okay? Good, okay, let's start with the first line. In English it means our Father who art in heaven. Okay, so take your time, copy it, and then just separate the words into syllables. Okay, let's move on to the next line. Hallowed be thy name. Again, copy the line and separate into syllables and we will check it later. I will give you the answers at the end. Okay, the next line, thy kingdom come. Okay, the next line is a bit long, so we're going to separate it into two parts. Thy will be done. Okay. 
and the second part of that line on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, let's move to the next one. Give us this day our daily bread. Okay, next one, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses. Okay, now we have another long one, so we're going to divide it in two parts. As we forgive those and the second part who trespass against us. Okay, nearly there, nearly finished. And lead us not into temptation Okay, and the final one, but deliver us from evil. Okay, and we can finish with Amen. <laughs> okay, good. So, you've copied your Padre Nuestro. You've divided all the words in syllables. And now we are going to check how well you did it. Okay, and for this I will need my glasses. Okay, so starting with the first line, the words are divided into syllables this way. Pa dre nue stro que is que es tas en el Fie lo. Okay, those are the syllables in the first line. In the second one, san ti fi ka do se a. Careful, both. E and A are the strong vowels and they cannot be together in the same syllable. So we have 
two syllables here. Se, a, tu, nom, bre. Okay, next one. Ben, ga, a, no, so, tros. Tu, rei, no. A is a diphthong, meaning we have a strong and a weak, uh, a weak vowel together in the same syllable. Rei, they are together. Okay, next line. A, ga, se. Tu, bo, lun, tad. En, la, tie, ra. Tie, another diphthong. Tie, ra. Ko, mo, en, el, thie, lo. Another diphthong. Thie. Okay, let's keep going. Da, nos, oi, nue, stro. Again, a diphthong, nue. Pan, de, ka, da, dia. Another diphthong here, i, a weak vowel, and a, a strong vowel in the same syllable, dia. Okay? Next line. Per, do, na, nues, tras, o, fen, sas. Ko, mo, tam, bien. No, so, tros. Per, do, na, mos. A, los, que, nos, o, fen, den. No, nos, de, ges, ka, er. Ka, er, two syllables because we have two strong vowels. A and e. So, two syllables here. Ka, er, en, la, ten, ta, sion. Here we have a diphthong, so both vowels, the weak and the strong one, are together in the same syllable. Ten, ta, thion. And finally, i, li, bra, nos, del, mal. Okay, and a, men. Okay. These are the syllables. Tomorrow or in the next lesson, we are going to see the rule and you will learn where the accent, which of these syllables should be accentuated, which of these syllables should be the strongest one. Okay? If it is if that's the case, if the Spanish really do put the stress on that syllable, great. But if not, if the Spanish put the stress on a different syllable, we will have to indicate that with tilde. Okay? But for today, I just wanted you to practice and understand how to divide words 
into syllables, okay? And then tomorrow when I explain, or in the next lesson, when I explain the, the rule, uh, you will then be able to decide when or where a tilde is necessary, okay? There are a few words here that carry the tilde because the rule that you will learn in the next lesson has been broken, okay? Good, okay, let's go back to our normal lesson. Okay, do you feel holy <laughs> after doing this exercise? Good, okay, so as you saw uh, now in, in action, um, there were words where you had two vowels together. Okay, um, and in those cases you had to know whether to put them in the same syllable or in two separate syllables. Okay, again, if they were both strong, you divided them, and if one of them uh, was weak, you kept them together in the same syllable. Okay, so now that you understand how uh, these syllables work, how we divide Spanish words into syllables, you are ready to learn the rule and then see when or when to use tilde, okay? The famous graphic accent. Okay, and for that I will see you in the next lesson. In the meantime, practice dividing words into syllables. You don't need to write them down, just as you maybe read uh, or, or learn Spanish on your own, just try to uh, divide words on uh, into, into syllables, okay? Great, take care and I'll see you in the next lesson.